Uh, how, how much do you know about what's been going on in Linlithgow? Have you just well, I've been I've been having words with uh, people that I know who are from here, from there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was contacted by Martin Day, the MP for Linlithgow East, mm-hmm. and, and also uh, there's been a bit of a chat in the uh, a group called the African Caribbean Society Scotland. There's quite right. a few West right. Lothian members in that, mm-hmm. and amongst them are Laura and Makami McCrum. Makami's a, a legendary uh, black community figure mm. in Edinburgh, uh, and her family, they stay in Lilifco, so they're um, getting it right from the horse's mouth from what they're telling me mm. is they feel that the, the they're very much in favour of uh, defending the town's heritage because uh, the, they, they're aware of the, the links of you know, the what the black bitch represents mm. and they they don't think it's racist they think it's just part of the heritage of the town um and they're legendary anti-racism activists so they're locals they're from the left boat so if they're saying that then i don't have a problem with it i suppose what it is from what i've seen um green king has changed the name of various pubs across the uk with questionable titles and i suppose if there was a pub like that in london <laughs> then i would raise eyebrows but actually the context is everything here um and so um, i'm i think it, you know so i'm i've been asked if i as smp blame convener will support their campaign against green king changing the name and i am going to do that excellent okay well that that's that's quite reassuring to hear that we've been told that there's been consultation um, and the, the, the name is considered not to be inclusive. There's a kind of suggestion that the, the proportion of people in Linlithgow would feel uncomfortable just, just simply at the, at the name, or even that maybe the, the use of the name these days is being you know, used to sort of be racist on the side kind of thing, like you know, um, <clears throat> as an excuse to say those kind of words out of context. I think Martin's made some very good points. It's very difficult to take the name out of context in the local setting i mean it's 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 set within that medieval borough it's very difficult to not realize what the what the pub represents um and in terms of like local consultation i mean nobody seems to know who or what was 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 consulted here do you know of um a, a bame representative that that has an objection that's 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 you know i understand that the west lothian uh, race forum was 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 contacted mm. Uh, was asked and but none of the people who did speak to the to green king were from lynn lifko mm. uh they were from west lothian but the, apparently none of the people who are actually from the lifko who would have been really obvious to ask none of them were asked mm-hmm. and had they been asked they would have said what you and i have just said uh, so it's pretty clear to me that um that they have probably manipulated the result of this uh so-called consultation. Um, they have put it out to people who don't know as much about it as other people do, mm. or at least uh, don't know the context as well as other people do. Um, the coat of arms are pretty straightforward there. That that's you know that's part of the town's identity. Uh, that's what you call a female dog that's black. <laughs> it's what, what it's called, and I think we we need to be. There, there, are, there are times when it's really important to pick up language and pick up incorrect use of language. Um, you know, and I don't think this is one of them. You know, right. so I, I want it to be very clear that from black community activists who are from West Lothian and people who are from Lin Lith- Lithgow, uh, it's not coming from us. And so I suspect what's happened is that Green King have a brand identity policy going on here. They, they have decided corporately that they will respond to the demands they've obviously had down south to change the name of offensive names of pubs uh, that have potential racial connotations. And they are basically trying to apply that as a UK-wide rebranding thing. And they've probably, uh, let's say they've asked the questions in such a way to such people as to develop an answer that's suitable for their purposes of changing the name. So, how would we how would we actually like apply um, that that theory appropriately if we were going to analyse the different names and titles we've had that like last summer we started to look at the street names and we started to see names like Buchanan Buchanan Street and in reality that is that we're we're venerating people who um, made it to the top as it were 
uh, but off at the back of things like slavery. And so we're, we're showing might is right by venerating street names in that way. So if we start trying to apply that kind of um, analysis to to various names, how, how does this one, how, you know, how does that apply in this case? I think this is not in that category. I mean, as you know, I'm leading a consultation in Glasgow around the question of street names, uh, statues, the slavery legacy, and so on. Uh, there's a special subcommittee, a, a, a work, a short life working group on slavery legacy, which has been meeting for a few months now. And we are just not far away from being able to start the public consultation around what should we do. Uh, suggestions are things like, you know, putting up plaques to explain the street names. Uh, some people have said that some should go, some should stay. Uh, whatever the public's feedback is, we will take all those views on board. And obviously I'm not going to prejudice it by saying what my own opinion is. Um, but clearly the, there's a thirst for some change to happen uh, and it, that something that acknowledges the slavery legacy. Uh, but this isn't a slavery legacy issue. <laughs> it's nothing to do with slavery. This well, goes of arms, from what well, I can see. Mm -hmm. I mean, something that maybe is to do with slavery is the name Green King itself. Um, the name Green in Green King, um, this, this, this man made his fortune off the back of plantations and slavery and was also vehemently anti-abolition in the day. So there's a legacy of literature historically um, of him speaking against the abolition of slavery. And yet the name Green King venerates the name Green do you think it's maybe some worthwhile that we we ask Green King what they're thinking about doing about their own title? I'm just looking them up. Um, Barry St. Edmunds, isn't it? So they come from yep. Suffolk. And this guy was called Benjamin Green. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so I don't know what Benjamin Green had, but he, he had sugar plantations in the West Indies. Yep. He was a slave owner. Mm -hmm. So presumably he got compensation from slavery. I'm going to check in the <laughs> Legacies of British Slavery website. <laughs> to see if he, in fact, did, as I suspect he would have done. Okay, that's it. A bit of research. I'll, I'll look it up right now. I mean, the, the, this is, we're what, what we're, we seem to be getting from this is that the, the black bitch in Linlithgow has been very much the scapegoat for a kind of a, a whitewashing, you know, um, as Martin's put it quite well, false virtue signalling, you know, quite inappropriately. Well, I, I suppose I, I don't like that expression, to be honest, but I think there is a sort of, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's the equivalent of greenwashing from COP. There's a sort of BLM washing <laughs> that corporates did after mm -hmm. big demonstrations and so on to be seen to be on the right side of, of history on these things. And, you know, obviously Green King is trying to respond to that. Um, but as I say, that, you know, there's lots of things in British public life that have a slavery connection. I mean, the Booker Prize, for example, the guy who was Booker, you know, his his firm, well, you know, they've got the connections to Guyana and, you know, the slave plantation and so on. So that was rather unacknowledged at the time when it was set up. So it's still called the Booker Prize. You know? Yeah. Is it, does yeah. this kind of thing, does it affect the, the, the BLM uh, or the, the, the general um, campaign? Negatively, you know, when, when we see it being used like quite inappropriately. I mean, for, for many people in Linlithgow, this it's like very, very deeply hurtful and it's like almost like racist against Linlithgow, if you like. I don't know if that's, that's, I don't know if that's the correct term. I'm just trying it's to think. Quite, but it's, very, it's, like a, it's like a cultural imperialism. And many people there that I spoke to when I was through, they're really insulted at the idea that they would have tolerated a racist connotation like this. Yeah. I get, I get what you mean. I, I, I can vouch for what it's like to be in a community that uh, is denigrated by other, by the media and so on. Mm -hmm. I'm from Sight Hill, you know, when, yeah. when I stayed there for 10 years. So for 10 years, we had to fight against the malign uh, impression that was given about Sight Hill as a, a den of racism. And in fact, the opposite was the case because the grassroots community fought back against racism, united uh, the demonstrations did, you know, demonstrate in support of the refugees and around housing rights. Yeah. And we fought and united our community and isolated the racist, actually. So so we were always maligned as a byword for racism. So we, I know what that feels like. Uh, so it would be very unfair for Lynn Lithgow to get that 
be, be tarred with that brush. Um, but that said, there's been issues in West Lothian as well. I mean, obviously, just recently, the I think it was just a couple of mo- weeks ago, actually, the John Newlands Festival has finally been dropped. Name has been dropped from the festival. Now that's just going to be Bathgate Gala, as it should be. Uh, that's taken a couple of years of discussion, argument, and then finally the, the annual general meeting of the society itself mm. voting to change the name. Uh, but that originally stood on some sensitive ground. So, you know, it, we know these things are complicated, but there it's clear cut. You know, the festival's celebrating a, a, a Jamaican plantation slave owner. He requested his money to the town and to the, the main school there. So the, in Bathgate, it was pretty clear what that connection was. But there's no such thing here in, in Lithgow. It's not the same thing at all. Yeah. I mean, this this maybe is beyond your remit here, but is, is there some kind of like recourse for the for the, the campaign in Linlithgow? Um, we're wondering perhaps if maybe like the, the, the culture secretary... Um, can do something in some way because because it's the, the thing is right there's an implication if the pub was to change the name because it was deemed uh, inappropriate um, in, in today's language right then following that potentially the the name of uh, all sorts of things like the, the town magazine which is called the black bitch there's the statue but might have to be changed it might then become <clears throat> difficult to even say something like oh my mother's a black bitch you know her mother was a black bitch um you know if you could be in a workplace somebody could overhear that and then it could it could you know tumble out of control because it's seen as no that that language is actually not considered appropriate these days you know <laughs> because of the precedent that was sent you know set by changing the pub so as a deep impact on how people celebrate their own heritage I get you. Um, it's 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 the context, isn't it? In in your town, that that would be an appropriate uh, way of addressing each other. Mm. Uh, and indeed, um, what Laura McCrum was saying to me that she's proud as a black woman to be a black bitch because she is from uh, mm. uh, Linlithgow. Mm. Uh, she's grown up there, so it's the context. Yeah. Context is everything. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, as well, we've had two Scottish premiers, at least. Mary Queen of Scots, a proud black bitch. Alex Salmond was a proud black bitch. Each of them would call themselves by that proud title. So it goes outside of Linlithgow. It's a, it's a very much a Scottish-wide context. So, well, I, I'm, thing, I'm wondering here about the rest of you... Scotland backing up Linlithgow. That's maybe where I'm going <laughs> with this. How, how, how can the rest of Scotland really, well, you know, what political levers have we got? What control have we got? What can we do? I have to be honest with you that before the furore, I, I had not come across that expression. Okay. So uh, I suspect uh, the majority of certainly of black people in this country certainly have heard that mm. expression and, and the context. So mm. it, it, the fact that somebody like me, and I've been here 20 years and I didn't know about this, uh, then it's obviously quite niche to, to West Lothian, to, to maybe to Edinburgh to a degree. But yeah, I, it's not something I, I'd ever come across. And obviously, I know people from that town, you know, so, and they have never mentioned it to me. So it, it, it's obviously something you have to know from being local. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm going to be supportive of the campaign to keep the name because I think it's, it's appropriate. Um, so, you know, I suppose that's the best thing that I think we can do uh, as anti-racist activists. We say, well, actually, you know, you know what? <laughs> this is one case where we should be less sensitive about the, the use of the language here because the language is literal. <laughs> and, you know, it's referring yeah. to a history and a culture and a yeah. tradition which is local to your town. Yeah. So that should be respected. Right. There's a, another little question that I, I thought I might run past you. It's on the question of offence. So if we take... Um, the fact is, right, the fact is you will have, like, say, American tourists will come to Linlithgow as part of their holiday, and they will walk past, you know, that pub. That'll be the first time they, they, they see these words put together, and they'll get a shock. Moments later, they, they find out about the legends, they're wrapped up in the story, they're having a beer, all's good. But the fact is that there's a moment where somebody does take offence, and I want to just discuss how important is it that one person at some point can for a moment take offense at something is that something that we should really focus on because there's a well, culture at the moment a climate at the moment i would say climate that sort of says if if one person somewhere is offended then everything has to change and the the, the maybe there's a lot of goodwill behind that but 
how important is it to defend one person's offence? I, I would say that context is looking beyond the, the, the first layer and finding out more. And, you know, offence is, is something that you need to just deal with yourself and get past. Uh, how, how would you put it? How would, how would you okay. discuss that? The, well, that's the first thing is that we shouldn't assume that only one person's offended. Secondly, you can't expect never to be offended by anything, but also we should expect that we don't want to deliberately offend people if we can avoid it. And this is the thing. I think in this case, if I had if I had gone to your town and passed this pub without knowing what I now know, I might have actually looked to Scanton and been a bit, what? <laughs> so if there was something very clear on the outside of the pub, Here's the explanation of the history. This is what the black bitch represents. That's what it is. If that was explained very clearly in very public, very large, I don't know if it is. I've not been to the place. Uh, but then that gives the context. And that's the point. I think signs and notices and plaques can give explanation which and, and cultural relevance and, and context, which, which, which will mitigate against the potential offence that yeah. might be caused. Yeah, well, the the good news there is that the the, the campaign uh, compromise really is to utilise there's a gable end to the the pub that faces mm -hmm. into the high street, so it's a big prominent, but it's white at the moment. It's only got the logo Black Bitch Tavern and the and the, the coat of arms is on it. And what they what they really want is to have like Linlithgow Town mascot, and then you know, like the story being told in painting on the... Absolutely, the end. perfect, perfect. What, what there also is, just further up on the high street, is a statue of the of the dog chained up, and there's an information board there, and that tells the, the story. As you were about to go from the high street to the lock, you see the story of the black bitch, so you go down to the lock, and then you'd see the palace, you'd see the islands, um, and then you know, you know, um, where all this stems from. Okay, well, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I understand that the the dog and the master had had a a, a connection and, and a mutual bad ending. Is that correct? Well, what happened was, um, although there's various tellings of the story, um, it goes back to at least the 13th century. It might be a more ancient story. It's actually a bit like Greyfriars Bobby, so that's an interesting yeah. one. There might be some kind of like common um, it's, it's archetypal story that, that people tell, but. Um, what happened was that there was a thief, and so the man was caught stealing <clears throat> whatever the circus. Some some stories have him stealing from the palace, and King James sentences him, but that's like a lot later. But anyway, he, a, a man was caught stealing. He was a thief. He was sentenced to be chained by the neck um, in an island in the loch to starve to death. And after a couple of weeks, they realised that he was still alive, and then they realised his dog was swimming over with food. So when the dog was caught, the dog was then chained up, on the opposite island, and both of them were, were out there to starve to death together. And so the dog symbolizes bravery and loyalty. So it's, yeah, it's, it's quite deep in the, you know, in, in the sense of um, identity of, of people from, from Linlithgow. Well, but it's, it's very sense. much of Greyfriars Bobby, but that's, that's the thing I was thinking, right? You could, if you look at Edinburgh, I mean, Greyfriars is an area that, you know, will take you know, the, the, the sweep of the tourism that comes to Edinburgh is part of the, the package that they go for. And they go and they touch the statue and they get good luck. And, you know, and there's all and people read the books and there's, there's the films. But the fact is that Bobby could, in some people's slang, be, you know, a word for if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby. Now, could you imagine a publisher saying, right, from now on, these books are going to say Greyfriars Terrier? Because, you know, they've got to go to schools and children are going to read them. So it's not really appropriate today to be saying that the Bobby, you know, could, could, could we see a situation where, like, we have to say Greyfriars Terrier? How would we respond mm. to that? You know, it's kind of the same thing. And there's an, ec there's an economic impact. That's maybe where we're going with this as well. Um, to, to, to denigrate that part of Linlithgow's heritage, there could be a serious economic impact on it as well. Mm. You know, they could be. Um, I suppose, yeah, it all depends. It's all in the mind of the beholder, isn't it? And obviously, the context of what the person brings with them, obviously, they have to take cognizance of the history of the place they've come to. <laughs> and that, that's what you go to a country for is to discover these things, you know. So, when they're visiting your town or everything in Edinburgh or Glasgow, the things that are here 
are reminiscent of the stories that we're telling each other. I mean, after all, the the origin story about Glasgow and the you know uh, Saint Kentigan and you know his his mum and you know was it Thenu, uh, the whole legend about her being basically a single mum cast adrift in a boat mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. by her dad. Not, 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 you know, the patriarchy was working there. That it's part of Glasgow's story. You know, Glasgow's got the, the the tree that never grew, the 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 fish that never swam, the the bird that never flew, and the bell that never rang. All of these are not true, but you know. Okay, is there anything more that you think we need to add to this? I'm quite happy. That's that's nice and um, nice and simple and straightforward. I think we've covered everything. No, I, I think it's a straightforward thing that yeah. you know w- yeah. we need to respect the cultural traditions and not everything is reducible down to the, the, the way language is used. I mean, it's pretty clear, obviously, that in which culture, and this, it's not the only culture where it does this, the word black is used in, in negative ways, in all sorts of ways. You know, and, uh, you, know, you have a black day, you have a black depression, you have a, uh, you know, black sometimes Wednesday. it's used positive. Black Wednesday, Black Monday, but also when you're in the black, you're in you're in surplus. So sometimes it's it goes the other way. Yeah. So yeah, you know, obviously I use black as a political identity, and when we, we need to be very clear when we're talking about one thing and when we're talking about a descriptive thing that, that, that one thing is not the same as the other. 